Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this Erwin Mitchell webinar, Thursday Thoughts. Here we are again, and we are here to deliver to our clients, our contacts, our communities, our colleagues, a webinar to try and help support you during this COVID season. We try and do different topics each week, and this week it is the art of remote networking. And people, it is an art, not a science. We're going to share with you our experiences, some tips, some tricks, and answer some of your questions around this topic. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Zara Pabani, and first and foremost, I am an ambassador for Erwin Mitchell. I am also a family law partner, and one of my partner responsibilities is business development nationally. So hopefully you've got the gist. I'm all about people. And we're going to be joined today by another person who is all about people, Danny Griefson. And she is from an organisation called Lift This Life, and it is her business. Danny's got an incredible uh, CV, and I'm just going to pick out a few of my favourite highlights of it. She's worked with Top Gear, she's worked with Coca Cola, she's a guest lecturer at Cranfield University. And the top thing for me is that she's going to be doing a TED talk, which I think is incredibly exciting. Now, before I bring Danny in, Oh, today there's a Q&A function so you can ask questions as we go <laughs> along. Please feel free to do that. We've got a few questions already that we will cover. Danny and I are going to talk and engage with each other and you for the next 30 to 40 minutes and then we'll pick up questions thereafter. Today's recording is live um, and if you've signed up or you need to leave and then you want to watch it later, you're able to do that. But we hope you'll stay on because we want to engage with you. And if you haven't got a question, feel free to make an observation in the Q&A chat or ask us to cover something or repeat something. This is your webinar. We are here for you today. So use it and abuse it today. Now, Danny, great to have you with us this morning. Really exciting. Uh, please tell everybody a little bit more about yourself and how you've got to where you are today. Oh, thanks, Zara, and thanks, Erwin Mitchell, for including me on um, on this webinar this morning with you about about remote networking in this in this very strange season that we've all found ourselves in, and how we're adapting and moving to to this virtual world. So, thank you. Just a little bit about why I'm why I'm here today, sitting sitting with you. I used to work, as Zara, Zara mentioned, for some incredible brands like such as Rolls Royce. I used to make make Top Gear back in the day, and um, and then I eventually became um, a sales performance coach in the automotive world, and absolutely love developing people. And a few personal circumstances along the way, as for most of us in life, and it made me feel I really do want to significantly enrich and strengthen the lives of others, those that I work with, be those in a team or on an individual basis. So yes, I now work in the field of leadership development, which is a ginormous field, but essentially I lift performance and confidence of those that I work with. Danny, that's great. So let's talk about what do you think are the differences between networking pre-COVID and during COVID, that kind of face to face that we were all able to do and now it's remote. What are the fundamental differences? Well, very simply, Zara, and I always think simple and basic is a good place to st start. Very simply, in this remote world, for our business to grow, we have to connect. We have to connect in this virtual world. Connection is very, very different than when it's when it's face to face. But you have to step up and step in right now to networking and making the most of the connections that you know and the ones that you create. So I think that's really helpful, Danny. So what I think is, you've, you've touched on it, we are now in a virtual world. You're not walking into a room and shaking someone's hand. You're not, um, well, you can look them in the eye on this virtual presence, but you're not personally connecting and that personal touch does make a difference. I mean, at Owen Mitchell, that's what we talk about, an expert hand and a human touch. And it's much harder. I do think it can be for some people, much harder in a virtual world. But do you agree with me? The starting point You've got to have a virtual presence. So I would say the first platforms for most of us, whatever business you're in, whatever you deliver, LinkedIn and Twitter, they are king and they lead the way. Do you agree with that, Danny? 
Yes, uh, yeah, absolutely. I think you've got you've got to have a presence, certainly on LinkedIn. I've I've got one on Instagram, not not Twitter. It just it just works better for me, and um, and I I find it's a management of time thing. But yes, you absolutely have to have a strong strong presence on on LinkedIn for sure, and and on another social media media platform. So yeah, st first things first. Start with start with the, the basics. Start with updating your LinkedIn profile, and then I. Think I so, sorry go on go on after you no i i just i just think the where your linkedin profile your twitter profile your instagram pr profile i think essentially it's got to be around the foundation of the value that you bring so no, I, I agree with you and the thing is you know what i think some people to be fair to some of our audience they'll be very much of the view some people get a bit disabled by it, don't they? They look at this LinkedIn and think, oh, I don't know how to do this. Or they look at this Twitter or Instagram and think, oh, I'm really not sure about this. And I think what you guys need to know who are listening to us today, if you go online, there are so many tools to help you create a profile. And as Danny has said, keep it really simple. But one thing do, please do this, put your picture on. Now, lots of us don't like our picture or how we look, but that visibility is really really important people buy people in the way that they look they sound that how they interact as danny has said it's all about connection so make sure you upload a photo and in one line i mean like i said now you know you can have an elevator pitch i'm an ambassador for the firm i'm a family law partner and i am driven by business development i mean what would you say danny those are my three things what would you say so quite simply, it's it's about the it's very much about the value you bring, and I and I love that with the human human touch. So mine would be I help teams and individuals discover star performance without sacrificing health, family, or personal interests. So that that would be my very simple one-liner elevator pitch, what, what, whatever you want to call it. But to help people watching that haven't got that, just take your pen after this webinar and write this down. <clears throat> I am the go to person for. So you, whoever is listening or watching, what are you the go to person for? So for me, it's I'm the go to person for confidence and performance, essentially. So what are you the go to person for? Write down five or six bullet points because that's going to help with the value that you bring. So that's going to help with your one liner on LinkedIn. I am the go to person for and then write your bullet points. I love that, Danny. Really nice tip there. And then the other thing that I would say to people is your virtual, once you've created those profiles, you are not done. That, you don't just have a profile and you do nothing. So you start. How do you start? I mean, it, it, link in with your friends. Keep it nice and simple. Whoever's on LinkedIn, Twitter or Instagram, who are your friends? Start with them. Go to your colleagues. Then reach out. Who do you want to approach? Who do you want your audience to be? Who do you want to sell to? Who do you want to be your clients and contacts? Search them, start linking them in. Now, it, you know, it's really, it's interesting. It's a bit like an internet dating almost and um, dating generally. You've got to kiss a few frogs. You might send out some links and people won't respond. They won't reject, trust me, people don't necessarily reject on LinkedIn or Twitter, but they won't necessarily respond to you. And sometimes you think, oh no, that's awful. And what, why? I get so many requests absolutely loads of them some i do some i don't and it time wise i don't respond to them all don't worry if you don't get a response from them all but get them out there get your connections out there then start liking things just like them just applaud somebody just you can applaud somebody for their expertise ask somebody else who you've worked with who you know you've done a good job for do you mind giving me um a recommendation on linkedin and linkedin set this up so you can send it really easily also on Twitter, if you're on Twitter, share things, like things, retweet. It's one button function. So get your virtual presence out there. Then once you get a bit more confident, all I do, for example, is I see an article and I retweet with a comment. A great article must read. Or I say my colleague has done this. It's really impressive. I wanted to share it. Keep it nice and simple. Any more tips around around those I don't know much about Instagram, Danny, for example. Any more tips around that? Zara, I love your tips. It's making me want to move. It's making me, <laughs> making, making me want to grow. I love it. There's, you know, that, you know, you, you're, you're just you're just fantastic and that that drive really really you know really really comes through and it's really helpful but 
what what I will say is also be really authentic. Yes, you know, definitely retweet, de definitely, um, definitely like everything that everything that you like, and be authentically you. Because if you're not, you get found out, and you you do. So it's no good putting on your LinkedIn profile CEO of Google if you're not CEO of Go Google. You know. That's the extreme, but be really authentic about who who you are and and what you you bring. You know that's going to build your credibility. I totally agree with you, dear Daddy. And then moving it a step into a different direction now. So there's the virtual world, okay, of all those things we've talked about. But the other thing that's really simple and effective that you could do and easier than what we've talked about is you will have some contacts and connections, some that you haven't spoken to for a really really long time. Um, maybe some new people in your organization and company, maybe some lawyers you've dealt with, an accountant, whatever business service you're in, send an email. If you're very close to them and a bit more personal, send a text message. And literally all it needs to say is, hi, how are you doing? How's it been during lockdown? Literally, when we went into lockdown, that's all I did. Now I do have, yes, this is part of my job. So of course you would expect me to have it. I do have quite a lot of contacts. And I literally messaged everybody. A, because I genuinely care and I wanted to see how everybody was, but I also thought we're going into lockdown, connection, connection, connection. So simply send something out and then your next step will be when you've heard from them, you'll say, want to meet for a virtual coffee? And the other thing is, if you don't want to do a face to face, it's OK to say, should we just have a phone call? The old fashioned phone call, it can still work. So keep it nice and simple. Think about how you want to reach out to. And another point on reaching out is this. It doesn't have to be external. When we were in offices and buildings, we'd walk around and we'd see somebody at the water fountain or you might bump into your boss. You're not bumping into anybody anymore. Have the confidence to email your boss and say, hey, how are you doing today? I just wanted to touch base, hope the family is well. Why not? Why not reach out in that way? It will help you. Your boss, your colleague will remember you in that way. What do you think about that, Danny? What do you think about doing something as simple as that? De de definitely, Zara, reach out, reach out to your boss, because the other thing is, if this is not comfortable for you, if networking is not naturally comfortable for you, send your boss that email, say, hey, how are you doing? How are your family? But what's worked for you? How have you grown the business? How have you got to where you, you are today? What can I learn from you in your success? So don't be shy of asking those questions. If you don't feel naturally comfortable to go out and, and network, leverage your contacts and ask them how how they've done it, how they've got to where they where they've got to. So I think that's that's really, really, really powerful to leverage leverage people that you that you know. Also, when you're writing down that list of I am the go to person for, so I'm the go to person for performance, confidence, law, family, etc. Write down your warm contacts list. So these are people that are warm to you. So these, as Zara says, they could be your, your school friends, they could be your university friends, they could be friends at work. Write down people that are warm to you and give them a call. Nothing is stopping you in this season of lockdown, just picking up the phone going, hey, how are you doing? How are things going? How can I help you? And also, how did you get to be in the position that you are now? You can learn from people in this time and that is your power. Knowledge is power. And you know, Danny, you make such an incredible point there. We've all got egos and your bosses have egos. And if you say, if you ask for help and say, I'm really impressed with what you've achieved. Can you help me achieve that? Or are there any projects that I could get involved in? Is there anything I can help you with? That is incredible, I think. And I think it's really, really important to do that. And also, you know, there's another thing that I think is really, really important. If you want business, ask for it. Now, I know that's not easy, but let me tell you a little story. So in another business, in another guise, in another scenario, I meant to meet a contact who I knew quite well, but I was in a new business and I said, hey, listen, you don't give this business much work. What's going on? Why? Why not? You know, we're incredible. Why would you not? Do you know what she said to me? I don't see your people out and about. I don't see them. They're not in front of me. The last person I saw who was really good, I gave them the job. So you have got to got to be in front of your people regularly. You can't just touch base with somebody once a month and think that's enough. It, it, it isn't, especially in this climate. 
you have got to be and I'm not saying stalk people, but you've got to be in front of your competitors, if you like. So you need to be reaching out to your contacts on a fairly regular basis. I mean, I would say once a month, once every two months, at least really, you need to be saying, hey, how are you doing? Or have a reason to say, oh, I saw you uh, do that webinar or I, I saw this webinar happen. Oh, I saw Daddy Griefson on this. She was great. Why don't we reach out to her? Have a reason to talk to somebody. And I know sometimes it's hard to find a reason, but I think you've got to get in front of these people and then you've got to say, I'm open for business. I really want to work with you. And also remember, you don't have to have a client to refer to them. You could literally have a contact. I worked with these people. I worked with Danny Greveson. She's a great coach. Why don't we get her on to um, do a team talk for us just to lift the spirits of our team? There's a classic example. Danny, what do you think around that? Yeah, Dara, absolutely. I, I really like your point about your um, your contact saying, you know, that I use someone else because they were out there. And in in networking, in connecting in this time, it's a bit like if you want to get fit in this time, you are not going to get fit by sitting on your sofa, enjoying a packet of chocolate hobnobs with a cup of tea. You've got to get off the sofa and get out for a run, do a Joe Wicks. It's the same with growing your business. You've got to get out into the virtual world, into your laptop, into, into your phone and into your contacts. Hey, this is what I'm up to. This is what I this is what I offer. This is the value. This is the value that I bring. You have to get up and active with your contacts. So the other thing, Danny, that I want to talk about is a plan. So I love what you're saying. You you've told people to write something down. I never want to see a BD plan that is more than a page. And you know why you won't look at it. If it's more than a page, you won't look at it and you won't remember it. Keep it short, keep it simple, whether it be a team plan, whether it be a global plan or whether it be your personal plan, it should be one page. It should have a, one objective. It should have a measure and it should have three to five bullet points of attack. That's it. That's all you need. And then if you keep it simple, you're more likely to be able to deliver it and you're more likely to achieve success. What do you think about that, Danny? So, absolutely spot on. And I wanted to come to this is knowledge is power. Absolutely. But do you know something that trumps knowledge every time is execution, getting on and doing it. And what is the thief of execution? Complexity. So when you make anything too complex, too long, too too much of a plan, a plan under a plan, if you like, you're not going to do it. So make it simple. Keep it, keep it clear, concise, but get on with it. And let me just tell you, if you spend 20 minutes a day dedicated to developing your business, that is great. That is better than saying, right, Thursday, the whole day is blocked out for, get, for getting on with networking. I promise you, you won't do it. 20 minutes a day, build that muscle, get off the sofa, build that networking muscle, and it will gradually build for you and you will grow, grow your business and you'll thrive in this virtual lockdown time. I agree with you, Danny. And the other thing I would say is when we're talking about keeping it simple, I mean, we are all webinared out, aren't we? And I'm probably going to be, um, I don't mean to be negative or disrespectful to anybody on this call or indeed any of my colleagues, but people, death by PowerPoint. You don't need lots of slides. We're in this virtual world and we are glued to our screens. So we're looking at things in a certain way constantly. And it's hard on the eyes and it gets a bit dull and boring sometimes. So I would say if you're going to deliver something, you don't need loads of slides. Yes, you need some preparation and you might practice in front of the mirror. There is no shame in that. That's a good thing. Do it. But you don't need to do loads of slides. Think about what you want to look. Like, I've got a few notes in front of me today. I'm sure Danny's got a few notes in front of us. Danny and I spoke for, I don't know, half an hour or an hour or, you know, a week or so ago. And that was it. That was our prep. And then we've got up this morning, we've had a quick chat and we're on it. OK, we're good at this. We know what we're doing and I know it'll be different for other people. But don't put too much pressure on yourself. Keep it short and simple and sweet. And also, when you think about maybe I'm going to give you some other tips now. When you think about maybe writing an article, don't make it long. Don't make it techy. Make it short, sweet and punchy and get it out there. You can get it out on LinkedIn. You can get it out on Twitter. Don't do lots of slides. And then moving on from that, so short, sweet and simple. Uh, the next thing I'm going to talk about is a little bit of body language and what you're wearing and what you look like. 
yes, we're all more in relaxed clothing and we're not suited and booted. I don't think we should necessarily be scruffy either, because actually, if you get up and get prepared for your day, it does boost your confidence. So what do you think about that, Danny? Yeah, I, I, I absolutely I absolutely think, you know, work, look smart, work smart. I, I, I totally, totally concur, concur with that. And I think, you know, your body, your body language accounts for your physicality accounts for 55 percent of how you communicate. So the message that is translated to whoever you're talking to, be that on online, on a, on a video call, 55 percent of our communication is our is our body language, our physicality. So don't come all slumped and, you know, you're not not interested. 55 percent is that is that open openness and your heart, your, your heart here. Now, I love this and you might like this too. The Latin word core, C-O-U-R, for courage means heart. So offer your heart, have courageous conversations and lift your heart to your, phys to your physicality so that you communicate stronger with everybody that you're communicating online. That, that's fantastic, Danny. And did you know the other thing? In, in this COVID season, the other thing that's really interesting, and somebody said this to me, which I thought was interesting. So one of my, um, I know somebody in the corporate world, and he said to me, went into COVID, it all fell off a cliff, nobody's doing anything. So he said, I'm going to do some networking. And then I spoke to him again, he said, you know what, the networking is completely different. Because he's talking to CEOs, and he's in their house. And the, the you know, the, the spouse is saying something, the husband or the wife is trying to say something to them. There are kids running around, there's somebody at the door. And he said, you see a really different aspect of somebody. And you can connect with them a bit more. You can say, it's hard work, isn't it? The kids at home. So you have a different connection and something else to talk about. And that in itself can bring you closer together to create more business opportunity. Would you agree with that, Danny? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it, it's hilarious. E ever since um, it was Professor Robert Kelly, I think it was back in 2017, he did that North Korea interview on the BBC. And we all saw that his kids bombarded, bombarded in when he was giving a really high level um, interview with the, BB with the BBC. And that is working from home. Kids come in, you've got to make sure that your spouse isn't changing behind you. You know, we're in and out of each other's, out of each other's bedrooms at the moment. So connection, I feel, is on a more, um, on a more authentic level on a more authentic level because we're in each other's in each other's homes and you know oh that's a nice picture behind you or oh, that's is that your bedroom it's it's much more real real talk at the moment and yes as you say Zara you know oh, it's a bit tough with with the kids at, at the moment they're not enjoying homeschooling etc etc et so I think we are more more authentically connected but what I will say Zara is you know that it's not it's not that's not to paint a pretty picture of how networking is in this time because you you touched on it we do get a lot of people ignoring us. We do get a lot of, I wouldn't say rejection, but people not coming back to us. So years ago, I was I was UK marketing manager at Rolls-Royce. Rolls-Royce is a brand everybody wants to be your best friend. You want it at every event, you want it at every yacht club party, polo party, and every little magazine wants, wants, wants you in them. So I used to get a lot of messages and to do my day job, I couldn't get to all the messages as well. So and then setting up my own business, of course, you get a lot of no or, or, or rejections and emails not not answered. But let me bring that back to a chap you all have heard of, Walt Disney. So Walt Disney, when he was setting up his theme park, he, he needed funding. He didn't go to one bank. He didn't go to two banks. He went to three hundred and two banks. He got rejected so many times for funding for his for Walt Disney World. So without that, we wouldn't know the joy of um, of of Walt Disney, what it is, what it is to this day. So 302 rejection rejections he got for funding. So I just want to encourage everybody out there to to spend their time building that muscle. You know, give give it commitment in in networking it in this in this time. It's much better to keep going than to sit back on the sofa. So so do be strong in this time. And the other that's fantastic, Daddy. The other thing that's really important is everybody's important. Everybody on your team is as important as the next person, whether you're the CEO, whether you're support, whether you're we've got somebody on in the background at the moment. Natasha from IM is on the background on this call and I can see her. You can't. She's incredibly important and I applaud her for her help today. Everybody is important. Include everybody. I've got a little story. You've got some stories. Today. I've got a little story. I love this one. People might have heard of it. Um, years ago, the president, whoever it was in America, went to visit NASA. And he was looking around and um, there was a janitor 
and uh, he had a broom. It was obvious what he did, but the president wanted to engage with him. So he said to him, hey, nice to meet you. What do you do here? He didn't say, I'm the janitor. He said, I do what everybody does. I send people to the moon. And that's what it is. We all have to be on a mission together. It doesn't matter who you are or what you do. You have to engage all of your people. Now, how do you engage that? Now, I have to say, Danny, you're, you're, you know, you do leadership. Leadership in this environment has been incredibly interesting. It's been it's taken us all to a different level and it's been tough. It's not been easy. So you've got some I've onboarded people remotely so they haven't met any of the team and I've onboarded them remotely and I'm trying to engage them and make that, you know, network them internally. It's not easy for them and, you know, it's not easy for me, but it's been fun and it's been interesting. And how do you do it? Well, A, we're all having Teams calls and we're doing things and, and we're bringing people together. But and I mean this genuinely, and I'm not just saying this because Danny's on the call as well is, but you should look at people like Danny and other coaches and you should look to get somebody on your call to do a team coaching session. It will make such a difference. And literally time wise, because for some reason someone's stealing time because we seem to be we're not we're not traveling. We're not going anywhere. But some of us who are working are busier than we've ever been and we're flat out and we're exhausted and keeping everybody pepped up can be hard work. So a 15, 20 minute coaching session can be really uplifting. And I'm going to follow that on before I go back to you, Danny, with a story, mine and Danny's story. We are a product of remote networking success in the COVID season. At the beginning of the season, and I call, do you know why I call it a season? Because that's what Danny called it and I love it. Rather than calling it unprecedented times or whatever else we call it, Danny calls it a COVID season. I think that's great. At the beginning of this season, I went on to a webinar held by um, a friend of mine, but who she's also an accountant, and Danny was the speaker. And I'd kind of heard of Danny, and interestingly, we'd had some emails that had not got off the ground. And I watched her and I engaged and I asked her some question. And I'd had a really tough day, but this session was at the end of the day, and I felt so uplifted by it. I contacted her. I emailed her, I said, Do you know what? That was fantastic. Let's have a chat. We had a chat as a result of which she has now been on every team meeting for me in the family team up and down the country and given a motivational session. I've referred some clients to her and then I engaged her on this call today. That was a, that was our success. Danny, what have you got to say about that? <laughs> All I've got to say, Zara, is you are a formidable woman and, you know, I'm delight delighted to be delighted to be engaged with you. But yeah, that, you know, that that is that is how we how we came to get together. And, you know, we, we're in that collaborative spirit, aren't, aren't we? You know, you saying about engaging with everybody in this in this seat season you know we we really believe that you know a collaborative space is not a competitive space it's not up to not up to us to elbow people out the way it's about to you know what can we bring bring to to each other so and i think i think it's a great story of the success of re remote networking in this in this virtual world is, is our story so thank you for thank you for taking everyone everyone on that path and, and bringing me in here today but what what I want to share with everybody is what Gallup's research. Now you all probably know Gallup. Cheryl Sandberg, the COO of Facebook, cites them in her book. They do they do massive workplace researches and consult consultancy. What are the needs of people to follow you? What are the needs of followers? So followers on LinkedIn, followers as a, a leader in in your team. You, you touched on leadership in this time. What do people need to follow you? And it essentially boils down to four, four attributes. Those attributes, which I love, are number one, trust. People need to trust you. So when we spoke about that value that you, that you bring, bring authenticity and credibility. People need to trust you. You need to show compassion, number two, compassion. Zara, you have that ab ab abundantly. But compassion, you know, an understanding. Look at the leader of New Zealand, for example, Jacinda Ardern. She's led her country with such compassion through the COVID time. Number three is stability. People need to see that you're a stable force to follow you. And I think we can argue that that's why Donald Trump isn't so successful in his leadership. He's not all that stable. And number four is hope. So people need to see that you can provide hope for them, that you are a bright light at the end of that tunnel. So those four things your followers need, trust, compassion, stability, 
and hope. You can write those down. Trust, stability, compassion and hope. Oh, that's incredible, Danny. Really, really incredible. Um, in terms of what else we want to talk about today, something that you and I had talked about before, consistency. When you are going out and about and doing your networking and reaching out to people, be consistent, follow through, give feedback. So like today, you will at the end of this session see our contact details. You know, they'll be there and you'll be able to find both of us. You'll be able to Google both of us. Contact us. Tell us what you thought. I mean, there'll be a feedback questionnaire at this at the end of this anyway. I'm not closing it, Natasha, don't worry, uh, even though I'm talking about it. But feedback is really, really important. And feedback, just telling somebody that was really great what you did. I really enjoyed it. That can start a dialogue and a conversation. So that's another tip. But another thing I want to talk about as well is this active listening. So some of you may be having virtual coffees with groups of people. And if you're using Microsoft Teams, for example, you can have nine people on there. On Zoom, you can have a lot more. We all do this. I'm going to tell you what we all do. We all kind of sit there with a resting face that makes us look really miserable or that we're just having a terrible day and a terrible time. And we're not really. We're just kind of watching and focusing. Active listening is so important. Nodding your head, smiling and engaging is just. I have had speakers come to me before the COVID world because I'm sat at the front. I always go sit at the front because I can't see very well. And if there are slides, I want to be able to sit at the front. So and I will always nod and smile and they come and say, thank you so much. You know, you were really engaging. It's so hard delivering an audience. I mean, it's fine for me now because I can see Danny and I can see Natasha in the background. And that's nice. I like it. It helps me. It moves me. But don't just have a resting face. Be a resting face. Be an active listener. It's really important. Danny. Yeah, I think what you've what you've said about about engagement, Zara, that's so, you know, it's so, so important engagement when people are talking to you, of course, on on Zoom, you know, because we all can see on, on Zoom who's listening, who's on their phone, who who's who's not. So so pay attention. But that engagement goes goes deeper. You know, as you said, Zara, give give feedback. And that's the thing that, you know, I've, I've really connected and bonded with you is you do what you say. So when you say I'm going to introduce you to that person, by email. I know at least five, you know, maximum five hours later that will have come through on email. Engage and do what you say say you're going to do. That's going to build that's going to build your your connection and network in this time. It comes into that trust, compassion, stability, hope piece. And again, on consistency. So networking, as I mentioned, if you block out Thursday to do your virtual networking, it, it's not going to happen. Pay attention to it a little bit here and there every day, 20, 20 minutes perhaps every day dedicated to growing and and establishing your business. So reaching out to new people, but also maintaining those rela relationships with those warm contacts that we spoke about. And you'll love this analogy. I love a little bit of an analogy. It's a bit like brushing your teeth. You, you brush your teeth twice a day to prevent gum disease. You don't just do it once a month. You do it twice a day, I hope. So it's about consistency, not intensity. It's the same with growing your business. It's consistency, not intensity. So do it like you brush your teeth, 20 minutes every day of, of growing and developing your business. That's fantastic. And I think what's really important as well is, um, you know, we've, we've talked about all of the little aspects of this. In that 20 minutes, don't just sit there and freeze when you're thinking about your 20 minute time. Do one email. Reach out to one person. If that's all you do is reach out to one person a week, somebody that you've known or somebody you want to connect with or some feedback, write one email. When I, I often introduce people to people. So with Danny, maybe I've introduced her to somebody. But all I do is in the subject matter, I literally write an introduction and then I put, dear Danny, I'd like to introduce you to David. I think it'd be great for you guys to network. I'll leave you both to make contact direct. That's it. I don't say he does this, you do this. I don't, I mean, I keep it because I don't have as much time either to do it, but I want to connect you and that's what I do. So one email a week, either asking for help, see if you can give somebody something or connect somebody with somebody. And on that point as well, uh, you were talking, Danny, about collaboration. Why not reach out to our competitors? Why not do that? I do that all the time. Reach out to your competitors for two reasons. Find out what they're doing. 
and then share. Because if you are confident in who you are, what you are, what your business is, why can't you share? That person will then owe you a favour. So I'm, I will happily do that. I often, in my sphere, say, I know who my competitors are. I ring them and say, let's have a coffee. How are you getting on? What's going on? I know some teams up and down the country who have, who have what's called competitors drinks on Zoom. Invite all their competitors. Let's have a drink together. How are you getting on? How busy are you this week? Now, everybody might not be as authentic, Danny, as you would say in that situation because they don't want to admit. I mean, some people do. I'm really quiet. But what you might say is, oh, I've got this case and I know they need somebody else or I've got a case that I can't do for a conflict reason and I can pass it on to you. Or I've got this service line that I can't deliver right now. Why not share in that way with your competitors? I do it all the time. Danny, do you do it? Yeah, absolutely. And some of my some of my um, clients have actually come from people that I've connected with. Yes, we work in a competitive space. You know, another friend I've made that works in in leadership leadership development. Great woman. She um she referred a client to me because it wasn't wasn't her specialism, and she thought I'd be. I'd be better suited. But then actually in the last couple of weeks, I had a bit of a bit of a shoddy experience. Actually, a coach called me with a with a pretend client and I knew they were fishing for prices. And I'm really transparent with 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 my with my price point. I think it's I think it's I think it's healthy. But it was the way that she approached me pretending to have pretending to have a client. And I knew she was just she was just fishing. But I think, you know, and so when I navigated that one, but I'm I'm all for collab collaborations, particularly with people in your in your competitive space because you don't know they they can end up referring clients to you and that's exactly that's exactly what I've had with this with this one particular lady that works in leadership development also. Isn't it interesting Danny if that person you said was fishing actually turned around and said to you Danny what are you charging right now have you moved your prices in Covid I'm not sure what to do do you mind having a chat with me about that I mean how would you approach that? No I I think I think that's that's great because going back to my automotive, going back to my automotive days, there's you have to market your price. You, you have to market your price point, and equally as a coach, you have to know what your competition are doing. Yes, they might bring a different skill set. Yes, they might bring different experiences. But I think it's I think it can only be enriching. And I'm I'm all for authenticity and transparency. I'm I'm, I'm all for it. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to look at some questions, um, and we've had a couple of questions. So firstly, Danny, what do you think about this? Some of this we've talked around already, but let's try and give some, some, some answers to people. How do you generate interest in new services remotely? Great question. Really, really good question. And in new services particularly. So it again comes to comes back to that authenticity, but be really, really clear about your USPs. I would get three USPs of your new services and be clear about what value you bring in those three USPs. That's a really good. And then I would add to that, then get it out there, whether it be Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, just an email, a short flyer that you could send out to people. Keep it really short because otherwise they won't read it and get people to start liking it. Generate some interest around it. Start using three buzzwords around it and keep doing it. And that's how I think in a new service. I mean, we do that all the time. If we want a new service line, we create some form of link or some form of document or flyer and then we get it out to people and get people talking about it. And the other thing coming on what Danny has said before is ask for advice and help. That literally go to um, a, a potential client or a client that you've dealt with before and say, I've done this service before. I'm now offering this new service. What do you think? How could you help me with this? Is there anything that you could give me? So don't be afraid to ask for help create something and then get it out there. The next question, Danny, is this. How to discuss new business sensitively with funders who are understandably focused on COVID pressures? Now, this is interesting because one of my clients actually works in, in, in investment and, and raising, raising funds and I think it depends who you're targeting because some um, some people are hungry to invest at the moment. Some people are so hungry to invest at the moment. So you might not have to be all that delicate and sensitive because some people are so hungry for investment 
opportunity at the moment and I've had that conversation this this week so again just be really really clear I'd say be really clear and simple about what it is you're offering and look for the best people to target with what you're offering and as Zara said step up and step into those people that you're, you're targeting and I to add to that Danny what I would also say is that yes this is tough times people we're going to be in a recession it's going to take some time to recover but it's also a time of opportunity for all of us in one way or another whether it be you've had more time with your family whether it be thank god the children are back now i've got some time back whatever it is this is a time of opportunity and investors yes they might get nervous but they want to hear about opportunity so go to them and say listen tough times tough measures we're thinking around these things. So when you're ready to step back in, why don't we have a chat about these things? Can we just share some ideas with you and ask for their thoughts and for their advice and help? That's how I would go about it. We've got lots more questions. So Danny, someone had said, to, this is one of the questions. Someone had, said, someone had said to me that on a LinkedIn comment or post, you should only use eight words. Is this right? So let me tell you what I think. Yes, I think it needs to be short and sweet. Whether it's eight words or not, I don't really know. I don't ever count my words, but it needs to be short and sweet. Your thoughts, Danny? Well, it depends what you're comfortable with. You know, it comes back to me, me, me and my authenticity. What are you comfortable with? What sounds authentic to you? But we've all seen on LinkedIn people that think they're the Dalai Lama giving war and peace, and they're the, they're the voice of knowledge on on that on that subject. And quite honestly, they do sound like a bit of a bit of a wally. So I wouldn't make it too long, and that that you're that you're the Jane Austen of what, whatever world it is you're operating in. I I would keep it. I would try and keep it short and concise. But sometimes you 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 do need to go um, a little bit longer so whatever is authentic authentic for you so this next question i think is really interesting and actually i i think i might have asked you it but i think it's a really good question why instagram rather than twitter well quite honestly it's little old me in my business yes i've got a few people that i i collaborate with but there's there's enough to do with linkedin instagram answering emails running a business developing the business answer the, the accounts there's, there's there's quite honestly in, enough to do i used to um operate operate twitter as, as well but it's just something i just 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 haven't got to because um because i like to go on a nice walk every day as well um just to recalibrate the soul so i, I also, I will say that on this piece in this virt virtual world, take time off. Definitely take time, take time away. You're probably feeling that your back, neck, and shoulders maybe are a little bit tense. I read in the Telegraph that chiropractors' virtual appointments have gone up. So take time away to to uh, reset and come back and 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 go again. So for me, it's a time thing with Twitter. No, no, nothing, nothing other than that. Thanks, Danny. And I think what I would say is. When you're looking at these virtual platforms, see who you need to connect with and where they are. Because if they're in Instagram, go to Instagram. If they're in Twitter, go to. I don't do Instagram. I think I've got an account, but I don't really use it. But I think certain people use certain platforms. Look at them, find out who they are, and then make a decision, I'd say. So, next one I've been told a LinkedIn comment or post needs a hashtag. Is there a limit recommendation? For example, sometimes you see hashtag employment law uh hr human resources etc and so on um so I, I i was new to this hashtag scenario i think a couple of hashtags are plenty in my view i like it when people make them a little bit different um yeah i i think i think they're important i think do one or two what do you think danny same i i'd, I'd stick to about three three on linkedin instagram you can do up up, up to 30 but um but i'd stick to three on three on linkedin around there Oh, OK, so somebody's asked for you to go through um, that checklist again that you said, Danny, and they have put what was it? Trust, stability, hope. What were the other ones? Oh, great question. Trust, compassion, compassion, really important one. Trust, compassion, stability and hope. There you go. And you can look at the leader of uh, New Zealand. She's a she's an amazing leader, exuding all of those qualities. Oh, so this is a really, really uh, good question. Oh, I really like this question. What is the best feedback that you have received and also provided? Oh, Zara, well, Zara, it was probably going back to our little story, actually, after our networking, you know, you just you just sent me an email all, almost immediately going, you know, fantastic session, found that really, really inspiring because 
for all of us, it's good to know we do a good job. You know, it, it really does lift you and it's very heartening to know that what you create is is well received. It's also good to know areas, areas of opportunity. And that it's something that's really important, important to me to to offer feedback to those that I those that I, I work with. I mentioned a couple of people that I, I I work with and collaborate with. I was speaking to yesterday and just really lifting them up in some of the creative that they worked on worked on with me so yeah I think it think it's so important to give to give feedback particularly good feedback right now because in this time of lockdown we're all not feeling amazing it's certainly not living the dream so if you can just with someone a little email just to say do you know what you did good there or really like what you said in said in that meeting or that landed really well with me can we press into that a little bit more really encouraging and a little lift in lockdown so the best now I think I'm good at BD. I think I know what I'm doing. I like talking and I like speaking. But do you know what? I still get the fear. This morning I rang Danny. I went, I'm a bit nervous because I always get nervous before I'm doing something. And then once I get into it, it's really exciting and I love it and I don't want it to end. But I always get the fear. So I'm relatively new at Urban Mitchell and um, I did the very first webinar that we did. I was on the panel with some great colleagues, none of whom I knew. And um, our head of group sales and marketing um, literally rang me and said, you were really great. And I tell you, it was the best thing ever because it was so nice for him to do it. I was new, didn't know him that well. So it really lifted me up. So that was incredible. And the best feedback I've given is to my cleaner. I have missed my cleaner with a passion. And then when she could come back, I told her she was the mo one of the most important people in my family and she was key to my life now. And then what else I did was because then because of the difficulties in uh, setting up business and stuff, she start, start, decided to go alone. So I basically did a recommendation to loads of friends and she's one of a few new clients and I'm delighted for her. So that, that that's my story on feedback. Um, and then we've had a very nice comment. This is a fun and informative session. Thank you. That's good. Uh, we aim to please. Uh, next one, a really nice comment. Uh, thank you to you both for sharing your tips and stories and for your honesty. I always like to think about how I can help other people. It's about focusing on giving rather than selling. We can give by liking, commenting on or sharing others posts on LinkedIn and by making introductions as you've suggested, Zara. A simple thank you to those who you to, to help those who help you is so important too. I tell you, thank you so much for that. Sarah has given it. Thank you so much for that. I'll tell you something else that happened. IT, when you go into lockdown, complete disaster, all the nightmare, you need loads of things happening. It was all really difficult. I had this one person who was helping me, this girl, and I, I was bombarding her. And I knew she was probably being bombarded from all angles, but I was onboarding these people remotely. She did this incredible job for me. And she was so good. She was a junior. She was excellent. I emailed her and I said, who's your boss? She told me who her boss was. I emailed her boss and I said, I just want to say this person has been incredible. Now, the boss was delighted. She was delighted. It took me two minutes and it was worth it. Ah, so I think that's all our questions so far, which is great. So we've got that 10 minutes left. So we're going to surmise. Danny, what would you like to leave people with or what haven't we said or we haven't covered that you want to add and throw out there? Well, just on what you've just said about that email and IT and, and the boss, Zara, I think the world needs more of you, quite honestly. The world needs more of you. Um, um, but on just in this time of, of lockdown, just consider um, fishermen or women and, and fishermen when they cannot fish, they fix their nets. So how can you fix your nets in this season? What can you create? What can you make better for yourself, for your business and for the people that you, you work in and around and with? So how can you fix your nets in this in this season? Oh, that's fantastic, Danny. Thank you so much. So what would I leave you all with? It is genuinely survival of the fittest in the COVID season. And that means health wise. So be fit, be well. Like Danny has said, get off the sofa, go for that walk. You can do so many things on YouTube. Joe Wicks, this, that and the other. Get some exercise because if you start your day strong, you will end it strong. And then on networking, don't just do this session and go away and do nothing. You need off after this session to go into your diary and block out 20 minutes 
whether it be daily or weekly, indefinitely and then do it. Get to those 20 minutes, either hook up with somebody, either make it on your team meeting a BD call, reach out to somebody, me or Danny or somebody else and start something. Make something happen and make a positive difference. You will feel good and you will go somewhere. Now, I hope you've all got something from today. So there's a few things left for me first. First of all, um, I'm going to say a massive thank you to Danny. I mean, how incredible to have her today and go through this. I mean, we're nearly up, the hour's nearly up and it's gone incredibly quickly for me. So I, I hope everybody's enjoyed this as much as we have. Um, to all of you out there, thank you for taking the time and trouble to come to Thursday Thoughts with Owen Mitchell. We're delighted to have you. Now, please look at our website. Um, there are lots of things on there um, to help you with law and with other issues. So please look at the website. I also want you to uh, look at Danny and Lift This Life and Google her and see how she can help you. The other thing, please, if you've all enjoyed today, do me a big, big favour. Um, Natasha in the background, our IT tech in the background is going to put up, or she might have already posted actually, the link um, to feedback. So it's not going to take you long. And look how much we've talked about feedback. So help Danny and I today take the time and trouble to fill in the feedback form. So thank you so much, Danny. It's been incredible. I've thoroughly enjoyed talking with you today. Thank you, Natasha, for being in the background and helping. And thank you all. Please go ahead. Have a really strong day. Take care.